Ever since the 7th of October, we've seen these pro-Palestinian marches taking place in London and elsewhere. Indeed, I drove through one on Friday evening in Parliament Square and was very pleased with the fact that I was in a blacked-out car, windows-wise, uh, because I've been deeply critical. You know, we've got people living inside our country that believe in a totally different set of values and priorities. But I was assured by everybody, don't worry, it's only a minority. And after all, on these marches, we see an awful lot of white British Christians. And I kind of wanted to believe it until a poll published this weekend, conducted for the Henry Jackson Society, but done by the reputable JL Partners, has come out with these facts. This is a survey of British Muslims, remember. Only 25% believe that Hamas committed murder and rape. Well, we've all seen the pictures of what happened, the, the um, heli gliders that came in to that festival, but only 25% of British Muslims are prepared to accept that it actually happened. Nearly half, 46%, sympathise with Hamas. Hang on, Hamas is a terrorist organisation, a prescribed organisation by the British government, seen to be not just an enemy to Israel, but potentially an enemy to us, and yet nearly half of British Muslims support it, or at least sympathise with it. 52% of British Muslims want it to be illegal to show an image of Muhammad the Prophet. Well, you know, in our country, we do cartoons of the Archbishop of Canterbury, we do cartoons of the Pope and anybody in religion. It's certainly up to their image being portrayed and often in a less than favourable light. And the one that really I thought was perhaps most worrying of all, that 32% of British Muslims want to see Sharia law implemented in the UK. I find this genuinely terrifying. And I say that because the Muslim population of Britain is 4 million today. By 2050, it's projected to be over 10 million. Are we to have a huge group of millions of people living in our midst that, don't, that not only don't share our values, but in many ways would like to impose their values on us? That's what I'm disturbed by. Well, I'm joined by Dr. Alan Mendoza, founder and, of course, executive director of the Henry Jackson Society, who conducted the poll. And I'm chair joined by Mohammed Amin, former chairman of the Conservative Muslim Forum. Um, Alan, you commissioned this poll. Were you surprised by the results? In some senses, yes. In some senses, no. I mean, clearly, what, I, what we ought to be looking at is the totality of what we're seeing. And the totality of what we're seeing is that there is clearly an extremism problem within this subset of people in the UK. It's writ large across the board. It is, you know, question after question after question. It is quite different to the control poll of the general population. Uh, and even if you can quibble about certain bits and say, well, you know, people didn't know what they were answering, the fact is that overall, it's showing a much larger level of extremism uh, amongst the British Muslim communities than the general population. I think that's right. And Mohammed, you know, you've been on this show before and we're always very pleased to have you. And we have, we have Muslim priests that come on this show and we argue these points and, you know, you always condemn the acts of extremists within the Muslim community. You always do. Um, and that's quite right. It does need to be called out just as, you know, any acts of extremism within any community yeah. in a democracy should be called out. And the point I made at the top there was that I've wanted to believe that it's a minority of the British Muslim population that support these views. Because all the Muslims I know want to get on with their lives and do well and don't go on these demonstrations. But, Mohammed, these figures indicate that half the Muslim population have an entirely different set of priorities and values to that what we would call British. Well, it's a big survey... I downloaded the tables yep. uh, this afternoon and I've been looking at them. And some of the things are pretty discouraging. Others, you wonder what people think about the polls. For example, 9% of the total British population want Sharia law in this country. What do they mean by that? Well, 9% of the British population would be, I, I, I'm going to have a guess here, but most of them would be of the Muslim faith. Uh, only 6.5% of them is the Muslim faith. All right, so there's a, a tiny 2%, yeah. a tiny 2% yeah, but, but, but of Sharia law. But what were they th thinking about? And for that matter, what do the Muslims themselves actually mean? Well, when remember they say that, they that with Sharia all polling, law? There yeah. is a margin of error of yeah. 2 or 3%. Yeah. People misunderstand the question. So yeah. I'm not going to take that too seriously. Yeah. But the word you just used, discouraging. Yeah. 
I, I wouldn't use that word. Mm. I would say alarming. Uh, when I look at this country and what British Muslims are doing, the careers they're pursuing, their public spirited attitude, I find it discouraging that we're getting answers like this from the poll, but I do not panic when I look at this poll. I am discouraged by certain aspects of it, okay. particularly, for example, people are in denial about Hamas and its murders. Oh, in the yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Mohammed is, you know, as he always does, using very moderate mm. language, never wanting to inflame any debate, but it's much worse than discouraging, isn't it? Yeah, look, I, I sympathise with Mohammed's point of view. He, yeah. he uh, would not agree with these views quite clearly, and I'm sure he's as, you know, struggling to understand it as much as everyone else. But it is worrying, it's deeply worrying, that there are some people who are not like Mohammed, who uh, have a very different viewpoint quite clearly. And what's particularly worrying, Nigel, is if you, if you dissect the results, on almost every different point, the youngest cohort is much more radical than others, and perhaps that's a generalised societal problem, um, but it's a large cohort, obviously, given the way the population pyramid is working. And the other fascinating and terrifying thing is that graduates are much more radical than non-graduates. Okay. So it seems that having a university education is no bar, and in fact, in some ways, appears to be a gateway to more radical views. Mm. Mm. Well, I was a Trotskyist at 20. Yeah, I mean, that is a fair point. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have opinions at university that change. Yeah. But I also think Alan's point here really is these figures are across the board and that's what makes them very, very surprising. Yes, there's a preponderance in youth, but it does go right through the ages, doesn't it? Correct. And when we say graduates, we don't mean necessarily people who are 21. We mean anyone who's graduated from right. uh, university at any given point. So that could be, you know, someone in yeah. their 70s now. now I'm, I'm beginning to understand, folks, why the police just stand there and do nothing. I'm beginning to understand why the police are terrified. They clearly understand the sheer size and scale of the problem. But the really big question to both of you is what do we do now? Well, that is the question. And I think the, this is a challenge of integration policy in this country. It is certainly true that many of Britain's Muslims have integrated beautifully and are, and are, you know, kind of playing valuable roles in society. But it is quite clear from this and other polls, this is not the only poll in, uh, in recent years that's shown this. But, it's, there the, is, but it's the starkest. It, it is the starkest, which yep. tells you that things may have gotten worse, yep. which tells you integration yep. policy may not be working in the way intended. So what has to happen straight away, in my view, is the government dusts off all those reviews that have been gathering um, you know, kind of dust on the shelves, the Casey review, the Khan review, the Shawcross review, and implement them straight away and go, we've had studies into this problem. We understand what the issues are, how we can move this forward. Let's get on and actually do it rather than talking about it. And I put it to you, Mohammed, that it's going to be very difficult to integrate or perhaps even reintegrate people whose views are as hardline as this. And there may be a couple of million of them. On the contrary, British Muslims have been getting more integrated with every decade that's gone by. First of all, geographical dispersion, because at one time they used to be very concentrated in certain parts of the country, like for example, Tower Hamlets. Uh. People from Tower Hamlets have been moving out in the countryside. Uh, it's quite clear with every year that goes by, people are more dispersed, more people are living alongside people who are not Muslims. And... There's been con massive progression inside the, the media, in the professions, in the law, amongst banking. I see a very positive success story of integration. Well, that may well be true for a large number of Muslim people who've done well at school, who are doing well professionally. And you're quite right. There are lots of Muslim people doing incredibly well. My worry isn't them. My worry is that if this poll is right, up to two million... Uh, you know, who, who, and some will be in good jobs, but I bet a lot are at the poorest end of society. I don't know how the answers to these questions vary by people's uh, socioeconomic group. I don't know if the data tables have that in, but if they do, I haven't had time to look at them in detail. Uh, what I think is a real issue is that there are still parts of the country where Muslims are sort of quite concentrated geographically yep. and that dispersion needs to continue. Does it also depend a little bit on where they came from originally? Whether the families are Tunisian or, say, Pakistani? I suspect not very much. I mean, attitudes towards the Israel-Palestine conflict may well vary by geography because, of course... Yeah. Everybody's Proximity Muslim, and, yeah. but it, it, it makes a big difference if, well, if you, the most extreme, if you're Palestinian, for example, as opposed to if you came from the Indian subcontinent or Malaysia. Alan, I've been told many, many times, and seen myself, 
that there are areas in the north of England where communities that have come from Pakistan have not advanced very well. Is that part of this problem? Well, I think part of the problem is just this lack of integration in those places. So um, uh, someone like Ed Hussain wrote about this in, in a book oh. where he you know, went around the country essentially pointing out to what he termed a monoculture, which he did mean a Pakistani monoculture, which he of course understands well coming from a similar yeah. background, uh, which has taken over from the British culture. So from his perspective, and I think Mohammed's saying the same thing here, it's about, you know, we've got to break down that area. And that is what things like the Casey Review wanted to do. It suggested you've got to break areas down so that people do have access to other people in this country and understand they are not islands and that they are part of a broader whole. OK, well, folks, thank you. And discouraging, alarming, you make your own minds up at home. But let's hope that government and civil society do act because we cannot afford for this problem to fester and grow.